Number nine, please. Item number nine is an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the City of Beaumont amending ordinance 20-031 to amend the public health emergency disaster orders for the City of Beaumont, allowing the opening of city facilities, providing for severability, providing for a penalty, and providing for repeal. And due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, certain city facilities, as you know, have been closed to the public since March. And at this time, the Lakeside Center, the Downtown Library across the street, Civic Center, Event Center, Julie Rogers Theater, Jefferson Theater, Sterling Pruitt Center, and our uh, community centers are closed. Uh, this item was placed on the agenda at the request of Mayor Ames and Councilmember Neild so that the City Council could consider reopening these facilities. And if the Council so chooses today, uh, the staff would recommend that we do so on Thursday, October the 1st. Thank and you, Council. You've heard the reading of number nine. May I have a motion, please? Move to approve. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Before we move forward, um, I would just like to make a few comments about this. And um, Dr. Arfine was planning to come to this meeting, but right before the meeting, he, he was not able to come. But um, I do want to make a few comments about it, and I have been talking to him periodically over the last few weeks. And as most of you are aware, I've, I've been opposed to opening the city facilities for the past few months, um, which I still think was the right decision, um, mostly due to the amount of po the reason I felt that way was mostly due to the amount of positive COVID cases versus recoveries, the ability of our local hospitals to care for the COVID patients and not be overrun, our hospitals not be overrun for non-COVID patients to get prompt care, along with the staffing and equipment capabilities of our local hospitals. Um, that's all in information that were given to me by the medical professionals and also the hospitals and um, basically um, begging us not to move forward with opening these, and this was over the last few months. However, um, I've recently reevaluated my position due to a few things. One um, is our local positive cases numbers and hospitalizations have been declining um, fairly rapidly. Um, in addition, Governor Abbott's press conference last week on the 17th, he implemented the use of a data-driven hospitalization metrics used by physicians and medical experts to, to assist in guiding the state's ongoing efforts um, in reference to COVID-19 um, while expanding uh, serv business services and, and business openings. Um, I won't go into the details of that metrics, but it is available online um, under government at Governor Abbott's page. But our area is within these guidelines to move forward, and that that pay, played a huge, um, a huge um, that meant a lot to me. But also the main reason is because I look at the cases every day, and we've been steadily declining. But in addition to that. Um, our recoveries have been higher than our new cases, which I think is important. Um, I do want to reiterate, though, um, and I, I made some notes, so if you watch it, I'm looking because I don't want to forget anything because this is still very, very important to me, and I think it's imperative to our city and the health of our city um, that I want to reiterate that we must and we have to proceed with caution because we don't want to go backwards. Um, we need to maintain our health while moving our city forward. A significant decline in COVID-19 cases is not a sign to let up a vigilance against the virus and that it's even more important now that we embrace the guidance of our medical professionals, our physicians, and those who treat these patients by wearing a face covering that I did have on, I had to talk, um, social distancing and practicing proper sanitation procedures. If we go backwards, I'll be the first one to raise my hand and say we need to take drastic measures to change this position. Um, I'm not saying this is over. I don't think by far it's over. I believe that we'll be going into next year with this. But if we continue to do what most of our citizens have been doing by 
social distancing and wearing masks, I think that we will continue to be on the right road. But again, I just want to let everyone know and the council know that um, this is not the end of it if our cases race up. As I mentioned before, um, Dr. Orfeen had planned to come, but I had a conversation with him and um, we've been talking regularly. And he also states that he is, and I'll give any of you his number if you wanna call him, he said that was okay. But this is what he says, that our positive cases and hospitalizations have gone down significantly. And he is um, taking care of those patients. Um, it's in, it's below 30 in both hospitals and that's ICU and the general um, hospital population and it has been for a, a couple of weeks now, which is an unbelievably good sign for us. But again, um, we have to take this seriously and not go backwards. Um, Dr. Argree, Dr. Arfine agrees and he stated to me that we have to move forward cautiously because we don't want to go backwards. Um, he said this, what he said to me and I said, what do you think going backwards would mean? And he said um, that if both of our hospitals get up to 75 patients, both in ICU and in their general populations, and that means St. Elizabeth and Baptist, which are the two that serve the city of Beaumont, um, due to COVID again, we will need to take drastic measures to bring the numbers back down. And I agree with him. Um, some of you may, read in the, may have read in the media that um, Hardin County is seeing um, an increase in their cases. And as we know, many of the Hardin County residents come to our area to shop and to do different things. Um, and so that, is, that does present a little bit of concern. But I think if we continue to do what we've been doing, social distancing as we've done in here, um, wearing masks, then we will be fine because at some point um, we do need to move the city forward. And um, that's my stance on it. And I just wanted to explain it because I've been a strong, strong uh, proponent to uh, keep the buildings closed. But I do think based on um, what's happening in our city as far as cases, what I'm hearing from the medical professionals <coughs> and um, uh, the guidelines that the governor has put in place um, recently, the, the most recent guidelines I should say, um, do play a strong um, role in that. Um, with that said, um, Council, I'll open it up for any questions or concerns or comments, but I did want our uh, city attorney to uh, speak with us because I think there is some confusion on, on the governor's order, which in a lot of cases there have been. Um, I, for one, believe that you should wear a mask anytime you're inside a public building unless you can social distance, and I know some of you don't agree with me on that. I, I feel very strongly about that unless you're trying to talk and make a speech because I'm getting ready to put this back on. But um, there are um, some areas that might be misconstrued if they're not um, addressed in the newest order, then they stay the same as the previous order is how I understand it. So if you would, um, city attorney, would you please um, bring us up to date? I know the restaurants were able to open at 75%. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's every public venue, correct? That's correct, Mayor. Uh, the governor on last Friday uh, issued new executive orders, uh, increasing numbers and specifying categories for the increase of those numbers. And, and, it, and the order does not speak to every category of entity or business. Uh, specifically, it does not speak to the types of, uh, specifically to the types of uh, uh, venues that we have here in the city of Beaumont. But at the same time, his order uh, gives guidance or gets guidance from, and, and the Texas Department of State Health Services gives guidance to his executive orders. And the, the TDSHS uh, provides categories that would impact it, uh, city of Beaumont venues and, and, and uh, types of buildings, specifically uh, wedding venues, uh, wedding reception venues, which our event center would be considered to be, uh, museums and libraries, movie theaters, 
uh, fine arch performance halls, which the Julia Rogers would be, and it speaks as to the halls as well as to the patrons. Um, and it also gives guidance to uh, Texans who are over the age of 65, which would impact our uh, Lakeside Center. All of those venues are limited to 50% of their total listed occupancy, with the exception of uh, Museum. museums. And museums are at 75%. Um, so that's where we are. We're at 50%, and, and the guidelines do specifically speak to uh, being informed and taking action based upon common sense and wise judgment that protects the health and safety of uh, those folks who would uh, enter into our venues. Um, it does not sp speak specifically to uh, community centers, which allows us to use that wise judgment and common sense in terms of how we would use those facilities for our citizens. So uh, there is discretion given. Um, and we, I've spoken with the manager and, and Emily Wheeler, who operates these facilities, and I think we're all on the, the same page that we would move forward in the event council so chooses uh, in protecting the citizens who would use our facilities. Okay. So um, the best year center, are we looking at, I mean, was that, would that be at 50% too, even though it serves an elderly population? Well, it depends on how you look at it, Mayor. Uh, you know, there, there we do have uh, workout equipment in there, and the, the, the governor's order speaks to uh, gyms and gym facilities. And I don't know that you'd want to look at that facility as a gym or a gym facility. Uh, but at the same time, he speaks to guidance for Texans over 65 years of age, and that population for that center is that critical population. And... They advise if you're that age, stay home if possible. Yeah. Uh, so I would think we wouldn't want to do more than 50% in that building. Agreed. Okay. And um, that would be up to the uh, citizen who wants to come. Now, and of course, the Bester Center, although it does serve that population, anyone, any age can go to it. Obviously. Right, right. So, um, okay. Any questions of um, the, of the city attorney? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Right, thank you. Mr. Attorney, what are your thoughts on opening council chambers back up to citizens? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the governor's order continue to speak to groups of 10 or less. Uh, and it would address, a, you know, a gathering such as this, 10 or less. Um, again, maintaining social distancing and wearing a face covering because it, it would be, a, a, you know, a public place. Again, that's up to the council. The, the governor has relaxed our open meetings regulations to the point where we can meet as we have been, social distance, limiting the number. I wouldn't think a packed um, council chambers would be in our best interest for anyone. I, I don't, I mean, we're pretty full right now. We've got some space over here, but for the most part, I think we're just trying to keep people apart. And even in our venues that we are starting to open, um, whether it be the event center or wherever, it does speak to social distancing. And in the Julie Rogers, there has to be chairs in between and that kind of thing. I would only be interested in doing that if we could keep the distance. In. And as I see right here, this side looks pretty good. This side's got a little bit, maybe about four more people <coughs> is about all we could take and still stay in those guidelines. So up to y'all, but um, that's not on our agenda. Um, is that, did you have something for the city attorney? No, no. Does anybody else have anything for this? Go ahead, please. No. I do. No, not for the city. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Go ahead, please. So I stuck my head in the conference room, and I think there were two people that were in there right before the council meeting that might want to speak to council. I don't know. But uh, I would be favorably inclined to allow on a first-come, first-served basis maybe the first four or five citizens that want to sit in here and observe uh, provided that we don't have any more than we have here right now uh, to allow that to happen uh, I am mindful of what you're saying though about continuing to need to be able to uh, spread out and 
if for some reason we had a lot of people, I guess if you're not part of that first four or five people, they would have to be in the conference room. But uh, some people strongly feel like they want to uh, be here. And, you know, I, I think we've all seen emails from some citizens yes, that want that. Particular. Yes. <laughs> okay, so but that's not on our agenda today. I don't think this that can be attached to this, is, or is it? It's not a closed so it would not be, we'd have to bring that up separately? I, I would think so. Yeah, I believe so too. Okay, I'm just making sure. Um, is there any uh, council member, Samuel? Yes, ma'am. I'll simply state that uh, I appreciate the freedoms and rights that come along with being residents of America. And uh, we have a freedom of choice. Um, some people look to and value uh, the health care professionals. Some look at the adverse impact it will have on economics. Um, some listen to the health care professionals as far as being the source or the value. My anticipation was that we hear from health care professionals, but uh, regardless of whether they're here or not, uh, everybody uh, has that's here have been going through the pandemic since the beginning, and uh, we all have some common sense, and I think that's what has to be used with uh, everyone else that has the opportunity, whether they're going to participate in uh, the functions and utilize the facilities. Um, however, uh, my decision will be based on uh, just my living. And I don't trust what everybody says. Uh, I could care less about uh, those who have ulterior motives. Uh, this is not a necessity. I believe that had we done what we should have done in the beginning of this pandemic, uh, we would be much further ahead by now. We did not, and we are where we are. And whatever we do today, two months from now, three months from now, six months from now, we'll be able to look back at today and say either we made a good decision or it was not. Uh, I realize that there's not as much testing uh, going on now that has been in, in the past. Uh, and yes, I do understand that the hospital uh, occupancy uh, has changed, but I do realize that now we're opening schools. We're seeing young children contracting the virus and dying. I also know that with the additional opening of facilities means more people will contract. So uh, I will simply say, um, it's up to each individual council member to make their own decision, and that's good. Uh, I choose to err on the side of caution, and that's why I'll be voting against it. Uh, but I just hope and pray that uh, the residents of our city uh, will not be lulled into a false sense of security and thinking everything is okay, thinking that they can go back to life as it was before. There's a lot of people out there that will not have the wherewithal to make those decisions. There are some young people that have no idea of what they're doing. Uh, it will be up to parents, grandparents, guardians to make sure that they are safe. Um, so with that, um, uh, council brings it back. Uh, it's ours to make our own individual choices. And so with that, I just want everybody to know that um, I choose life and health over dollars and economics. Thank you. You had something? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, earlier today uh, on CNN, um, the United States hit the 200 mark, as a matter of fact, when I left home today, it was 200, 
and 5,000 Americans that have died. Um, I, have a, I have friends, that's a mother and a daughter, that did everything they could have possibly done to not get COVID. They didn't even go to the family dinners on Sunday and both wind up with COVID being as cautious as they could possibly be. And I'm saying that because they did everything within their power and their right to not get COVID. But you don't only wear this to protect yourself, you wear it to protect others. So when someone says, I don't want to wear it, I'm not wearing it, I have a right not to. It's my constitutional right not to. And which it is your constitutional right. But then when a disease like COVID infringes on the freedom of other people because you choose not to wear a mask, then it affects me or the other person. And when you look at 205,000 people where wars did not even kill that many people, and to open up facilities that it's not life or death or uh, their community facilities, and there are facilities that taxpayers pay for. But if you're not alive to even enjoy them, then the responsibility comes upon us. So that's all I have to say, Mayor. Understand. Thank you. And um, please, I agree with both you and Councilman Samuel in every way that you said. I just think it's um, at some point we have to look at moving the city forward. There's a lot of people who want to do that. There's a lot of people who don't. But I want, I want to reiterate again, if we see the numbers rising, I'm going to be the first one to say we need to go backwards. And Council might be, disagree with me, but I'm just stating that that is just, um, that's a big deal for me. And, and speaking with the physicians that are actually taking care of the COVID patients and actually are putting their hands on those patients saying to me, I think it's a safe time to do this, but we have to proceed with caution. Caution is when you go somewhere, even if you can social distance, unless you're outside, that you wear a mask. Every person in Texas shall wear a face covering over the nose and mouth when inside a commercial entity or other building or space open to the public. Or when in an outdoor public space, wherever it is not feasible to maintain six feet of social distancing from another person not in the same household. That is the, in the governor's order. Or, key word, every person in Texas shall wear a face covering over the nose and mouth when inside a commercial entity or building or space open to the public. Or, when outside, when social distancing is not feasible. It's pretty clear to me, and I'm reading this because of some of the things that Councilmember Mouton said. I would feel much more comfortable with this if um, all of our citizens, when they do go to our facilities, would wear a mask and not give the staff or caterers or anyone else a hard time when they ask them to do so. I spoke with Leslie French, who is the General Counsel for the Office of the Attorney General for the state of Texas, um, called the governor's office, and she is the person that I was given to speak to, and she did tell me that was the intent. However, um, people have their rights. So um, with that said, I hope that as we move forward, and there's been a lot of people on council, and there's a lot of people out there in our community that have urged us to please move mm -hmm. forward, I'm willing to do that, but I'm willing to do that under certain stipulations, and those stipulations are that we wear masks and that we social distance, and if our hospital numbers get higher, then we're going to pull it back. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that happens if it does, 
So I'm not taking this lightly. I also choose life, but I also know that there are other people that um, feel differently. And um, right now, I think they might be a majority, but we'll see. So um, with that said, I believe if anyone, no one has anything else, I'm going to call for a vote on this item. We do have a motion and a second. All in I, favor? I'd like, I'd like to say something, please, if I may. Sure. Thanks. Uh, today we're looking at things based on a lot of information. And uh, science is the key. And we need to know that people under 44 have like a 2% mortality with COVID. The people that are over 65 or have some underlying condition are really in bad shape as it relates to COVID. It can have an adverse effect to them. When you go back and look at most of the numbers, and I'm talking about close to half of all the numbers of people that have passed away have been in nursing homes. And a whole lot of that was in New York City, not Beaumont, Texas. And so when we're looking at it, New York's a lot different from Beaumont. And Robin made a good point. You know, you can do a lot of things and still get sick. I mean, there may, you know, we tell everybody you know, get yourself checked. You might, you could have cancer, breast cancer. We talk about that. There may be people here that haven't checked that do have cancer. You don't know it yet because you haven't checked it. That's why we encourage you through the Gift of Life program and all the other ones to check and make sure. So there's a lot of things that happen to people for a lot of reasons. We all, those of us believe in God, we can't ask him why, because we don't know why a lot of this stuff happens. And a lot of it's sad. And you see somebody that has lung cancer that never smoked a cigarette in their life, and they die. I can't explain that. But things do happen. But when we try to be as conscious as we can about the reality of life, and the only thing certain as Benjamin Franklin said, is death and taxes. And uh, when we're born, we know we're going to die at some time. We don't, we hope it's when we want it, but it's not. You know, God's going to decide that. So I think if we, if we look at this, this isn't about dollars and cents and life. That's not the choice. This is about making an educated decision based on facts and my heart I'll say it again the first mark mar the first person to die of COVID-19 was a personal friend of mine I'll say it over and over again I take this personally it doesn't have anything to do with business it doesn't affect me as far as what I do I don't need to open up to do anything but we do have to think, we've got to see the big picture and not just focus on all the negatives, because there are negatives. But we need to think, what's the best thing we can do? Every single person up here should be doing that for all the citizens. If you're over 65 and you have underlying conditions, you, you have got to be careful. When people tell you, and if you're not, then sad things can happen. But this isn't about dollars and cents to me. It's about making a decision based on what, what do the numbers say, and we've talked about this, uh, that we can do, what can we do to be as safe as possible. There is no guarantee that any of us walking out of here today is gonna live till tomorrow, none. And I got a pastor right there I know will tell you the same thing, and he tells his, uh, congregation, folks, you treat people like you want to be treated every single day because you don't know that you'll be here tomorrow to do it. And that's the way we've got to look at this. There's going to be some things that are happening, but we have no control over that. I, can't under I don't understand people driving a motorcycle without a helmet, but that's their choice. But I'm not going to do it. And we've got to ask people to be responsible. 
we trust when we're driving 70 miles an hour on a two-lane highway that the person on the other side of the road isn't going to change lanes. And we're passing each other with this much distance. We trust people to some degree, and we have to. But that's what this decision is uh, as it will relates to the citizens of Beaumont, what's the reasonable thing to do with the information that we have to move forward? I, we all hate that COVID's here, but we can't make it go away, but we can do everything we can to try to be as safe as possible. And, and that's the way I'm looking at it. It doesn't have anything to do with money. Thank you. And wear our mask. Mayor, I too look at the big picture. It's personal to me too. I have two classmates that uh, died as a result of COVID. Uh, but the facts say over half of those that died were people of color. We don't know what God has, what his intent is. No, I, I agree. But we can look at the facts as they are and know that there are issues, there are problems. Are you done, Councilman? If not, go ahead. I'm just asking. I can't tell. I'm done. Anybody I have else? another Go statement, ahead, uh, Mayor. Go ahead, please. Uh, Council Member Pate uh, stated that you know you're you could be standing next to someone that has cancer. You're not going to catch cancer by being in a room with a room full of people that have cancer. The other point that was stated about the responsibility. Well, that's the whole problem because a lot of people aren't taking the responsibility of wearing masks and they're going into public places. And it's going to be a vote here in a minute and everyone is going to vote their conscience and, and what they feel. And everyone have a right to vote that way. But the other point of it is, is that there's no one to enforce the wearing of masks. We've seen it in here. It hasn't happened. It doesn't happen in most places. So then when you talk about having facilities at 50% or 75% and the governor has stated to wear a mask and people still do not honor or abide by the request, then innocent people are at the mercy of other people's rights and attitudes. Thank you. Thank One you. thing, Mayor, if I may. I'm well aware that you can't catch cancer. I'm well aware of that. And uh, Well, that's what you said. No, I said we don't know what can happen to all of us. That was my point. I mean, there may be somebody with cancer here that doesn't even know they got it. There are things that happen that we can't control as human beings. People drive down the street, get in an accident, you go, golly, I just talked to them yesterday. We don't know what's going to happen, and we can't control everything. That's my point. Uh, we just have to uh, uh, be di diligent and try to be as safe as we possibly can uh, and make decisions based on what we think is best for the community and there's a, whether it's a right or wrong decision I don't, I'm not saying that it is I'm saying there's a difference of opinion but there always is in life so uh, that's it I wasn't going to say anything but councilman with all due respect you're sitting beside me and you don't know if you have COVID or not as a matter of fact I just took a test today and I'm okay, glad you regardless. said that because I'm negative Okay, good. But is I'm that glad you not, said that. I think that everyone in here should be wearing their mask. I'm sorry. We're I six just feet apart. That's social distancing. 
but I don't want to. But you might walk behind me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, gonna, I got tested for COVID this morning, we, I'm and I'm gonna, negative. Mayor, I call the question. Sorry? I call you the brought question. it up, Mayor. What's your question? I call the question. To vote. To vote. I tried to do that earlier before the council member wanted to talk. Excuse me, if I give him the opportunity, I'm going to take it myself as well, if that's all right with you, because you would not have done that for me, but go ahead. I don't want to get into this, but I feel so strong about sitting up here and asking our citizens to wear masks because we're open in these facilities, but we don't do it ourselves. I wasn't going to say anything. I can't help it. It just makes me upset because I think it's hypocritical. And those of you who choose not to, that's your choice. But you know what? Y'all know how I feel about it. And I did call and speak with the governor's office. I did call <clears throat> and speak with other people. I did ask him for clarification on his order. And I'm just, I, I, I just can't. And I mean this with everyone deserves, I was not being disrespectful to you. If you wouldn't have interrupted me, I would have finished by saying with all due respect, because that's where I was starting council member but you rudely interrupted me well, before I could wait, wait before I could get that out and I don't appreciate that I don't do well, that I don't appreciate mayor you I, saying you don't know if you got it and you don't know that I took the test today and I'm negative that doesn't matter you shouldn't have said that it doesn't you, matter when you say something that you don't you know you don't know I know I'm stopping that's fine I'm stopping but, but you need to wear your mask okay all right, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor of this motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Five yes, two no. <coughs> the motion carries. Next item. Oh, is that all? Okay. All right, I would like to read that at the close of the city council meeting, the council will hold an executive session to discuss and or deliberate economic development negotiations in accordance with section 551.087 of the government code to wit specifically Suez water technology and solutions sinking incentives for their facility on College Street west of the Beaumont Municipal Airport consider matters to deliberate the employment evaluation duties of a public officer or employee in accordance with section 551.074 of the government code to wit specifically Kyle Hayes city manager Tyrone Cooper city attorney Tina Broussard, City Clerk, Craig Lively, Chief Magistrate. 